Open redirects are simply redirections from one website to another. Now, what could possibly go wrong? Well, let me explain. You might have seen a URL similar to this. abc.com redirect xyz.com There's a redirection happening to xyz.com as soon as you visit abc.com. If you happen to change this xyz.com in the URL to attacker.com, then you'd be redirected to attacker's website. Well, that's a basic idea of an open redirect. The word open redirect comes from the fact that the website happily allows you to redirect to any website on the planet. But why is the need for the redirection? As it turns out, a web application often requires these redirections all over the place like after logging into an account or even after a password reset. Let's look at some simple PHP code. In this snippet, we can clearly see that we're using the parameter from the get request and using it in the location header, which is basically going to redirect to any URL you specify in that get parameter. This is server-side redirection. However, that's not the only thing. There's also client-side redirections using JavaScript or HTML. If you're using JavaScript, it's most likely window.locationObject. Or if you're using HTML, it's going to be one of those meta tags. Open redirects are very common. You can find a ton of them in huge websites like Facebook and Google. But are open redirects a security threat? Well, that depends. Some consider it and some don't. The simplest form of security threat that we can think of is phishing. Have a look at this URL. This looks like it's going to google.com, but instead it's going to attacker.com. Well, you could say, I check the URL all the time. Well, that's great. But what about this example? URL is clearly encoded and you need to be able to decode it every single time if you want to check it. But the point here is, it's very easy to trick people who have no knowledge about all these things. Let's take a look at this scenario. We have a link to download Google Chrome. Let's click on it. Okay, as you can see, we've downloaded the executable and we are in the download page of Google Chrome. But the real question here is, would you open the executable? Well, if you did, you're pretty much done. It was a reverse shell. Let's break this down for a moment. First off, the link is an open redirect in Google. So as soon as you visit this link, you'll be redirected to attacker.com, where the real executable is downloaded. After the downloads initiated, the attacker's website will immediately redirect back to Google's thank you page, which is what you see after you download an official version of Google Chrome setup. I'm sick of this phishing and social engineering crap. We know it's not real hacking. Let's move on into how we can leverage open redirects in a better way for exploiting web applications. In the example PHP code that I showed you earlier, it was very clear that there was no validations or whatsoever. And you could say, I would never really do that. Well, that's cool. But what if you were using a web framework? Frameworks are a huge thing these days. Everyone's hopping in and creating these amazing projects. What about all of them? Let's take Flask, for example, a popular Python web micro framework. There's a function called redirect, and it does exactly what it sounds like. But many developers use this function without knowing that it's not only bound to the current origin, but it can also redirect you to any place on the internet. A common mistake would be that a developer uses this feature as a part of the password reset link, which could lead to account takeover in some cases. Let's say we have this password reset page. If you look at the URL, there are two things. One is a token parameter, which is obviously a secret, and there's another one, which is next. If we change that to attacker.com, the token gets leaked in the refer header when you make the request. Well, simple as that, account takeover. Usually, open redirects are used as a part of a bigger exploit, like chaining it with a service or request forgery, or in short, SSRF, or maybe even pop an alert on a Google subdomain. And that's exactly what Thomas Boyarski did. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering his name, but I apologize. He found an XSS on a Google subdomain by chaining not just one, but two open redirects. He noticed that the events.google.com was using a workaround for loading images cross-domain. 
The workaround was called PhotoProxy, and it kind of sounds like exactly what it does, which was basically making requests to picassoweb.google.com, another subdomain, from the backend and fetching the appropriate resources. The 2015 Google I.O. website was actually open sourced, and it was available on GitHub for anyone to look at. So looking at the snippet, which makes the request, you can clearly see that all it checks is for a URL that starts with picassoweb.google.com forward slash data forward slash feed forward slash API. But he also knew that there was an endpoint in the same website called forward slash buy, which had a redirection functionality in the continue parameter. So he simply used dot dot slash to go back to root and then buy. But this was not an open redirect. It was a restricted one which means it only allowed Google domains and no other. So he used another well-known open redirect in Google, which was forward slash AMP endpoint or accelerated mobile pages. So in the end, he had the ability to make requests to any website and load its content on the Google domain. But there was one more problem. The content fetched was being loaded with the content type header set to application slash JSON which means the response would always be of type JSON and the HTML would be simply ignored unless it's Internet Explorer. He figured out a way to bypass this, but pause the video for a second and try to figure it out yourself. I'm going to give you five seconds. If you figured it, well, that's awesome. If you didn't, that's totally fine. Here's the answer. He did it by making a request to a resource which did not exist at all, which actually threw this specific error and wrote the error onto the screen without the content type header being set to application JSON, because there's a return right after it. Due to this behavior, the browser's mime sniffing kicks in, and the browser will think it's a valid HTML and renders it as HTML. In the end, Google said events.google.com. Sweet. Like I also mentioned, open redirects can be used with server-side request forgery, or SSRF. I created a CTF challenge for ThreatCon that happened late November of 2018. I made sure that this challenge involved chaining multiple bugs together, but it was still an easy one. The web challenge was an API, written in Flask. If you provide a URL, it will tell you all the web applications which are being used, thanks to Applizer. But queries being made to localhost was not allowed, so to bypass this we can use a simple trick. Of course, redirection. In this challenge there was no need for you to find an open redirect, but you might find yourself in a situation where you're allowed to make requests to only specific domains. If you find an open redirect in one of those domains, you have a potential bypass. 